Greetings in Christ. Today we are beginning a new series. And this is a very important series. We call it the church that Jesus wants. Or we could call it Jesus wants his church back. And today in study number one, we want to look at the keys to unlock the understanding of the church that Jesus wants. See, in his heart, he knows the sort of church that he wants. And when Jesus said, I will build my church, what happened? By the end of the first century, we find that the church had abandoned the principles that Jesus had taught. And in Revelation 1, Jesus comes with uh, eyes of fire and feet of burning brass to bring judgment against the church that was no longer walking according to the plan and purpose of God and not building the church that Jesus wanted. And we see in Revelation chapter 1 that the Apostle John has a vision looking down through history for 3,000 years. He was at a pivotal time. The cross had happened around the year 30 AD. And some 70 years later, John is, has come out of exile. He's, uh, he's, uh, he goes to um, Ephesus. And he recounts, and we read in the book of Revelation, the visions that he had when he was on the Isle of Patmos. In this diagram, we can see John looking down through 3,000 years of history. He's looking from the time of the cross down to uh, the time when he was in uh, Patmos, and then looking right down um, through until the end of the age when Christ would return, which would be followed by a 1,000-year glorious reign of Christ. It's clear that John had two visions. And his two visions um, of the church, the first one in Revelation chapters 1 to 3, was a devastating picture of the church that was abandoning the truth, the pattern, the revelation that Jesus had given for his church. The second revelation, or the second vision, is Revelation 4 to 5. And this is the church of the future. The church of the future that John was seeing was a glorious church, a Christ-centered church. And this is the church that Jesus wants. Well, as we look at this diagram and we see that it brings us down to 2021, coming down to the time in which we are living today. And we are coming right to the end of the sixth day in God's redemptive week. There was a creative week, six days God worked and the seventh day he rested. But since the fall of man, we have been in the redemptive week. The first 2,000 years was the age of the father from Adam to Abraham. The second 2,000 years was the age of the son from Isaac down to the cross of Christ. And now we're in the third age, the age of the Holy Spirit, the fifth and sixth days of God's redemptive week. And we are waiting for the seventh day. And it's coming very, very soon. It's getting closer and closer. We don't know the day or the hour when Christ returns because that's in the hands of the Father. And we know that calendar dates can have uh, mistakes and misunderstandings, but we know that the time is getting close because the signs of the times are very clear. In Revelation chapter 1 and verse 19, Jesus said to John, Write the things which you have seen, 
So that's talking about his past experiences and the things which are. So that the state of events as they were at that time. And the things which will take place after this. He was being told to write about things from the past, the present and the future. And we're very interested in the future because we live in that future. We live in the end of times when that future has become our present day reality. But we can see that John had two these two visions. The church as it was in Revelation 1, 2 and 3. And the church that Jesus wants in Revelation 4 and 5. So that first uh, statement that he said, where Jesus said him, write the things which you have seen, which are and which are to come. But then in Revelation 4 and verse 1, he very specifically now turns the attention to that second vision of seeing the church of the future, the church that Jesus wants in the last days. After these things, I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. You see, John's second vision was a vision that was showing what was going to happen in the future. He said, write the things which must take place after this. And this becomes a natural division in the book of Revelation. Now, the Apostle John, this scene is the scene of uh, the house of God in the, in the temple or, or the tabernacle. And the Revelation, uh, the book of Revelation uses the language of the tabernacle. Now, in this diagram of the tabernacle, we see the Ark of the Covenants. That's in the most holy place. We see the table of showbread, the altar of incense, and the golden candlestick in the holy place. And in the outer court is the brazen altar and the brazen laver. Now, notice the, the layouts, because now when the Apostle John is at the beginning of the book of Revelation, what we see is that John is facing the wrong way. Uh, he was looking in the direction of the table of showbread. Maybe he was reminiscing on his uh, apostolic uh, brothers. There were 12 apostles, and on the table of showbread, there was the 12 loaves of bread. And the church had been established in the apostolic doctrine. Those 12 apostles in, that, in the early church. But John hears a voice, and where is that voice coming from? It's coming from behind him. Not in front of him, not on the table of showbread, but behind him, we have the golden candlestick. And the golden candlestick has a beautiful revelation of the church because it's, it represents the seven churches of Asia Minor. It represents uh, the word of God in the fullness of its revelation and glory. It also represents the anointing because the anointing oil that had to be filled in the golden candles in the church every day. In Revelation chapter 1 and verse 10, we read, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet. See, that's what I was saying. He was facing the wrong way. He was facing the table of showbread, but behind him, the voice came. And he turned around. And what did he see when he turned around? When John turned around from facing the table of showbread, he now saw the golden candlestick. He saw a new revelation. You see, Jesus was calling him to have a new revelation of what the church was going to be, of what Jesus wanted in the church. He wants his church back because we've gone a long way from that. In Revelation 1 and verse 11, it says, 
Jesus spoke to John. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. You see, these are the seven churches represented in the seven branches of the golden candlestick. And in Revelation 1 and verse 12, then I turned. You see, he'd been facing the table of showbread. He now turns around, and what does he see? He sees the golden candlestick. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. John was now facing the candlestick. What does he see? He sees a revelation of Jesus in the midst of his church. In Revelation 1.13 it says, And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man. He sees Jesus. Jesus in his church, represented by the golden candlestick. Uh, a glorious revelation of the church and of the revelation of the fullness of, of God's word. But let's look at these seven churches. You see, these seven churches where Jesus is standing in the midst of his church. First of all, it was Ephesus, but they had left their first love. Secondly, Smyrna. He was a church that had gone through tribulation, poverty, persecution. Thirdly, there was Pergamos with Nicholas and Balaam. Uh, a, a spirit of uh, dictatorship, a, uh, a spirit of false uh, prophecy. The fourth church, Thyatira, had the Jezebel spirit and immorality. The fifth church, Sardis, their works were imperfect. In the sixth church in Philadelphia, they were just hanging on, but they were the church of brotherly love and no actual uh, uh, sin is recorded against them. And in the seventh church, Laodicea, well, by this time, Jesus has been kicked out of the church. He's outside of the door um, of the church and he's knocking on the door. He wants to come in. I wonder how many churches today Jesus would like to get back into the church. He wants his church back. Now, after the mess that man had made of the church in the first century, Again, we come back to Revelation 4 and verse 1. After these things, you see, after he had seen this revelation of Jesus in the midst of his church, after these things, I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, Come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. This wasn't John's home calling. Maybe he thought it was time to go home, but no, the Lord just wanted to give him a revelation of the things that were going to happen in the last days and the church that Jesus wants. Let's have a look and see it in this next diagram, the church that Jesus wants to show us. Here in Revelation chapters 4 and 5, in this diagram, this is just a summary of the things that are in Revelation 4 and 5, but here we have a vision of a Christ-centered church. Jesus, the slain lamb standing, is in the midst of the throne. And around him there are the four living ones. Around him are the 24 elders sitting on 24 thrones. We see the seven spirits of God. There's not seven Holy Spirits, but the seven spirits of God speaks of the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And they're singing a new song, worship. Worship in the power of the Spirit of God. It's a worshiping church, a Christ-centered church, a spirit-filled church. It's a church led by multiple um, elders. It's also a royal priesthood. It says that they are kings and priests unto God. 
and it's a united church. There's not two churches. There's only one body of Christ. There's only one head of the body, and that's Jesus. And they were in unity. This is what Jesus prayed for in John 17. Father, that they might be one, that the world might believe. Jesus wants his church back. Jesus wants to build his church according to his pattern, according to his heart, so that he might impact the world and bring a great revival across the nations. It's a church of the Great Commission because people out of every tribe, kindred, nation and tongue are gathered. Now, read through Revelation uh, chapters 4 and 5. Beautiful picture of the church that Jesus wants. And it's in that church that the seven seals of the mysteries of understanding the plan and purposes of God in the last days are opened progressively one by one, the seven seals, in helping us to understand what is in the plan and the purpose of God. Well, brothers and sisters, this is the beginning of a, a series of studies. And this series will perhaps be 15 or 16 studies. And we want to have a look what sort of church Jesus really wants. And do we have a heart to have this sort of church, to be a part of that church, to be the people that Jesus wants us to be, a church that is going to have a great impact in these last days. We live in an age of pandemics. We live in an age when diseases like Ebola and COVID-19 and other diseases we live in a time of, of great political and military uncertainty with the rise of China, the rise over the last couple of decades of a global jihad. How are we as the people of God going to stand in the midst of these things? If we just go the way that we've been going, then we're not going to see what Jesus wants. We need to be the people that Jesus wants. And for that, we need to have the church that Jesus wants. He wants his church back. Are you willing to surrender yourself to him, that he might have his church, and that we might be a part of that church? May the Lord bless you as you continue to uh, attend this series. The Lord bless you and... Lord, I pray that all of those who attend will be enlightened by your Holy Spirit and by the revelation of your word, that we might indeed be the people you want us to be. And we say, Jesus, build your church, have your church back, and you be glorified. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.